<laughs> Welcome, Chris. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you. You have no idea. I'm happy to be here. You're ready. Yeah, but I'm a little, uh, I'm a little dismayed. I, I don't have an announcement. You don't need an announcement. Why oh, do you okay. have this thing on your? Well, tis the season. Oh, okay. Right? It's the season. I just like the sounds and everything. How do you so. like Europe, France? Love it. Yeah? This is my first time in France. Yeah? yeah. Second time in Europe. Good. First, first time I was in Germany. I'll, I'll hit the other countries sooner or later. All right. Well, you can meet everyone. They'll invite you everywhere. Chris, I let you uh, speak. The floor is yours from there. this side. Okay, great. And I let you rock the stage. You can even take out your hat if uh, you like. I will. I will. I will take it off. <laughs> I, I'm festive, but not The floor festive. is yours, Chris. Thank you so much, Leek. Uh, so I don't have an agenda. <clears throat> I don't have an announcement. And if that disappoints you, you can tweet it. I don't know if that was a good applause or a bad applause, but uh, I know it's going to be a tough crowd. So, I've been online uh, since 1992 in uh, an official capacity or semi-official business capacity since 1996. Um, I guess I turned media into mediocrity. Um, I'm just myself, uh, someone who loves technology, loves communicating. I love gadgets, although I don't know if I'm really hip on the scale, because I don't need a gadget to tell me that I'm a fat ass. I know I am. The last thing I need to do is share that with everybody else. I could tweet it if I wanted to, and then you could retweet it, and then everybody would know I'm a little overweight. But I'm American. I guess I can get away with that. So is this thing on? I, keep, I see it here, like in peripheral vision. I want to like chase it like a dog chases its tail. Like, uh -huh. I won't do that, though. So uh, I'm going to walk away from the podium if the camera can. Wow, pretty good there. Um, I've always believed that community exists inside of you. Inside of every one of us lives this idea of community. And where we go, our community goes. So. There's a mathematical term, and this is really, honestly, the only thing I remember from math class, or math classes in high school. By the way, my degree is in English education, and I'll get to that, I think, later in this presentation if audio is hooked up. So they, they have this concept called a Venn diagram. Have we uh, familiar with a Venn diagram at all? Like circles that kind of cross over at points? So there are many facets to me. I love the holidays, I live in Seattle, Washington, I drink coffee, I love cheese, which makes me in love with Paris. So I live in Seattle, that's one circle. I also like coffee, that's another circle. So, so can you imagine where the two circles cross over right there in the middle? Very active. I don't normally wear jackets, so I'm not used to being this dressed up. This is dressed up for me. I'm clothed. So, not that I go around naked or anything, if you saw that photo. So, in the middle, I live in Seattle and I love coffee. Now, if you imagine, I don't have three arms, so imagine there's another circle there, and I'm an iPhone user. So, I'm an iPhone user, I live in Seattle and I love coffee. That's still me. There are many pieces of me. So, wherever I go, I'm going to be looking for things that I identify with, people who I can identify with. That's where community is. But it's within me. And where I go is where community goes. Same would hold true for you. So over the years, uh, you know, I, I've seen a variety of business models come and go, mostly go, where I hear, well, we're going to create a community. That doesn't really happen. You, you can't create a community. It doesn't work that way. The community creates itself. It's organic. It grows that way. It's an ebb and flow. It happens with no matter what the tool. It isn't about the company that builds it. It's about the culture around it. I wouldn't care if Microsoft made a device like the iPhone. I wouldn't care. 
I love the experience the iPhone gives me. Do I like Apple as a company? No more than I like any company as a company. It's not about the company to me. It's about the culture. And that's why it wasn't a big deal for me when I heard that Apple was pulling out of Macworld. It wasn't a surprise. It's much more interesting for me to interact with other iPhone users. Have, I know there's a few in the crowd. There's this application called Bump. Have you ever seen anybody bump in public? It's kind of disgusting. It's basically you can exchange contact information simply by bumping your devices together. Interactivity. I can find out what apps my friends use, or people that I don't know, or who I don't know happen to be using. We share an affinity together. Apple gave us this experience, but anybody could have given us this experience. Companies are trying. Other companies are trying. But it's about the culture that surrounds the products and services that companies create that typically endures. That's where community lives, inside the culture, because community is a culture itself. Back in the day, <laughs> I was online before the web. Uh, yeah. See, one person raised his hand. Apparently, two people in the room were online before the web. You'd have to go to certain... There was this list called uh, Scott Yanoff's Internet List. Does anybody remember this? It was a little mailing list where they would, this guy, Scott Yanoff, would email, and it would be posted to news groups too, a list of everywhere you could go to on the internet. <laughs> you could finger Coke machines, which today sounds a little odd, but you can still do it. You can still. Basically, that's when you could use this protocol to, to look at this Coke machine to find out how many Sprites or Diet Cokes happen to be in it. And I think it's still online. That's what you could do on the internet way back when. You'd have to go to places. You'd have to find where your kind were hanging out. May have been in news groups, list serves. And then as the web started to develop, uh, before blogging platforms existed, you either had to cobble your own or spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on somebody else's platform. You had to find the people who could put the tools together where you could be a part of something bigger than yourself. But nowadays, that's no longer a problem. You can get community in a box. You can set up a blog, a forum, a wiki, your own version of a Twitter-like service. We're all over the place. But does that change us? Now remember, the community, as I say, which doesn't mean it, it's, that it's necessarily right, it's just my opinion, is inside ourselves. Where I go, that spirit of community goes as well. But I'm all over the place. I'm on Twitter, MySpace, still, Facebook, a new service pops up, sure, I'm over there. Friend feed, great, whatever. I'm distributed. We're all distributed. We almost need to be distributed. Because the web just isn't Facebook. It isn't just Twitter. It isn't just our blog. It's everything. And the things that we care about most don't exist on one site. They're omnipresent. Distributed. That spirit is still here within us but we don't have to go to one particular place to feel that sense of belonging, to feel like we are with people that we care about, our community. Now, this one trips up a lot of developers, and I'm a fan of developers. I'm more of a user myself. Community requires tools that can't be built. There's one thing that cannot scale. And that's our spirit. As entrepreneurs, that's our spirit. As iPhone users, that's our spirit. I can't scale myself. We can't scale ourselves. We can throw tools online. But if you believe that a community is a tool 
then you yourself are a tool. It's just a tool. It's what you do with it. It's the people who come. That's the community. It's not a blog. It's not a wiki. It's the people who use it. That's why we've seen companies and business models come and go. Some are still around. You know, the next Twitter killer, YouTube killer. People aren't there. Why? Sometimes it's a little magic fairy dust. Sometimes you just don't know. Now, is Twitter and YouTube, et cetera, going to be around forever? Not likely. Is that type of content distribution going to be around forever? Possibly. But people, we hope, I was looking for wood to knock on, there we go, will be around. We are the community, not the developers who develop the tools for us to interact. Those are just tools. <clears throat> when I talk about scalability, it's very important. There's a lot of passions in this room. We all care about many things, most likely, unless you have a one-track mind. I can set up a new blog like that. I can decide that I'm going to go after TechCrunch tomorrow, which I'm not likely to do. Because you know what? TechCrunch exists, and Mike and his crew are doing an amazing job. Mike is not a commodity. He's a person. But the tool that he uses to communicate is a commodity. It's a tool that you could use, too. What are you going to do with it? Set it up and hope that people come? Maybe do something a little different, a little better? When you think about the blogs that made it, just I'm going to take that tool for example, blogs. Why did they make it? How did they make it? Usually because the person driving or the team driving it had a unique voice. Usually. Not always. Or they did something slightly different. Like the website, thisiswhyyourefat.com. Sorry, not to... I know we had a wonderful meal thing out there in the scale. You can weigh yourself and put it online if you wanted to. It's a great website, thisiswhyyourefat.com. People submit photos of food concoctions that look amazingly delicious. Had it been done before? Sure, but for some reason or another... People picked it up and now they get book deals, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing happened with I Can Has Cheeseburger, Law Cats, another Seattle institution. The voice of people is not a commodity. When I do talk to businesses, and uh, especially those who are new to the internet and social media, which, if you might remember, used to be new media. Who knows what's going to be next year? Any social media consultants in the house? <laughs> when you talk about people online and them being themselves, this application sucks, this so-and-so sucks, this is horrible. When businesses see that, sometimes they get a little scared. Oh no, what are we going to do? They're saying bad things about us. Well, maybe make your product suck less. Is that a possibility? No, we need to shut them up. No, you can't do that. Well, we set up a forum or we want to set up a forum, but we're afraid that they're going to say bad things about us. That's good. It's almost better that you have people saying bad things about you because they care enough to say bad things about you. I laugh. When I see DRM strategies, and I'm a content publisher myself, I make money from content, and someone says to me, I'm afraid someone's going to steal my ebook. I said, you know, you got a bigger problem if nobody's stealing your ebook than you do if someone is. If no one's stealing it, it ain't worth stealing. But you can't control that. That's part of the DRM thing. Control. We must control. Bullshit. 
Control is bullshit. Control exists in the hands of you. You are in control. Don't let anybody try to convince you otherwise. And community works the same way. You want a community to flourish and grow organically? You guide it. Don't control it. Don't constrain. Let it go. If there's an argument, okay. Play Switzerland. Play the middleman. Figure it out. Make everybody happy. Try to calm the situation down when something happens. But don't ignore it. And don't squelch it. Acknowledge. Guide. I can't tell you how many times, and this may have happened to you in the past, maybe, where I've received an email from someone who was just, just railing on me, just could, thought I was the worst person on the planet, and you know what? I may very well be. But as soon as I responded to them with a little smiley face, they came back and said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you actually read your email. Well, yeah, I do. Uh, as soon as you connect with somebody else, suddenly it changes. And, and sometimes all we want to do is vent. When I, for a brief time in college, I was a telemarketer, brief time, called into a location, and uh, the guy couldn't stand the cable company. So I just listened to him for 10 minutes, rail on the cable company. And I was selling Encore. It was, it was a dollar. It was just a dollar for a movie channel. He just lays into me for 10 minutes. I just was calm, let him rant. At the end of it, he says, it's only a dollar a month? I said, yeah. He said, all right, sign me up. I didn't sell him anything. The guy just wanted to rant. I don't know if he's still a cable customer, but instead of trying to control the message, guiding it can be so much easier on a community. I have more in common with the people in this room than I might have with my next door neighbor. So when I was growing up, and I know I may not look it, uh, I'm 30 years old. So I, I collected these things called garbage pail kids. And I used to collect Star Wars figures. I still kind of do. Shh. The internet doesn't know that yet. Well, they do now. I'd have to drive around all around town looking for this one figure that I needed to complete my collection, Hammerhead. I was looking forever, couldn't find it. But now I can get onto eBay, got it done, easy, no sweat, even though I'm breaking one now. <laughs> and is you picking that up with the camera, getting a nice glistening there? I have more in common with people who I may not know. And the easiest way I can reach them now is the internet, where community exists, because community exists within us. These very complex creatures, we are walking Venn diagrams. And your Venn diagram may be closer to mine than someone who I may have lived next to for years and years and years and years. They're a part of a community, but I don't identify with my next door neighbor as much as I identify with someone like Robert Scoble. It's no longer bound by physical localities. I laugh, and not to offend anybody in the room, when I read a business card that says they're some kind of evangelist. I don't know if that's a title that's appropriate in a business capacity. Unless, of course, you truly are an evangelist. Community is much the same way. So if someone gets hired aboard a company or tap, you're going, to, you're going to lead the forums. You're going to be our liaison for social media. I've been approached by a few large companies who shall rename, remain nameless coming to me and saying, well, I was handed this, this big companies, mind you, I was handed a directive to reach out to bloggers. They themselves didn't even know what a blog was 
when they got this assignment. I've been assigned director of social media, and they're nowhere on Twitter. How does that work? How is that making me feel any more connected? How does that make me believe that you're a part of this community, even the culture inside the company that you work for? The best leaders in any community just grow into leaders. They become the leaders. They become the voices. They will tell you when things are wrong. They will tell you when things are right. Those are the leaders in a community. And you cannot just bestow the title of leadership onto someone that the community does not respect. It's crucial that community grows its own leaders. Many people, and I, I, I've been blasted for saying this, I don't believe Twitter is a community tool. I believe it's a commons, but I don't know if I would say that it's a community type of tool the same way that Facebook is. Twitter's very simple. It's beauty and simplicity. But if you especially read my feed, you well, you know it's all, well, not all about me, but the things that I'm doing. That's what Twitter's asking. What's happening? It's asking me. But community is almost just the opposite. It's the antithesis of ego. It's myself as I'm with everybody else. Is it okay? Is that right time? Yes. Okay. Keep going. I okay. was just like saying hi. Just make sure. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> Monitoring. Just to wrap it up again, when someone tries to tell you that community can just be placed inside this box and everything will be beautiful from that point forward, no, not without you, not without other people who care. Community doesn't exist here in the fingers or in the devices. It exists here, in your heart. That will never change. Twitter's not going to be around forever. Facebook's not going to be around forever. At least I don't think so. I don't think it works that way. But the human spirit, this feeling of belonging, of sharing passions and ideas transcends these tools that have brought us closer together. It brought me from Seattle, Washington to Paris, France. Connecting with people who I've only known online. Connecting with others who I only see at tech conferences. Your spirit is what matters most in the tools that startups build, in the tools that we use to communicate. You're at the center of it. And it's what you share, your ideas, your passions, your ability to communicate. That will spell success. You, wherever you go, are the community. And thank you for your time. Wow. No, thank you for your time. Thank you, Chris.